here's a little update on what is going on with this board. We have this little piece being clamped up. This crack was open. I just put some glue in there and mushed it. Clamped that good. We have a big piece underneath this blanket. That's our hot table. That's a large section that is being glued right now. Here's our giant triangular bit with our shim added, our double shim. It ends uh, right there. <laughs> That'll be under the bridge, nice and hidden. No one will be able to tell. I think we're going to glue this one last, this giant one. We're going to heat it all up before we glue that part because this whole thing could shrink down a little bit. We don't want it to shrink too much and take too much off that shim. And this bit had a little tiny crack. It almost needed no clamp pressure. I think I think it was this one or this one. One of these was kind of open. I put some glue in there and squeezed it and it squeezed good. I think these one of these is loose. This one's got some loose bits that we need to glue. Those are easy. But it's coming together quickly. We have, I think, four glue joints left. I have just started sanding the ribs, too. Here's one of the ribs. The farthest in the base. These were sanded quickly before to get all the finish off. I'm going to sand them with a higher grit sandpaper now to make them look better and then they will be ready to go back in or be glued to the board here's another glue job easy this is loose see so all I have to do is take some thin glue and spread it around and mush it in there top this this should be good. This side moves just a little bit. Might as well move it. One less thing that could cause a problem. Here's the next piece. This little bit goes right there. Nice thick glue. Doesn't need to flow anywhere. It's just gotta stick these together. There we go. Back to. Back to this little spot in the corner. I just took the clamps off. There we go. That should be nice and solid now. Shake this up and down. Nothing moves. Over here, I made a little pyramid of blocks to glue this little piece in because it was kind of, it wasn't flat, it was crooked. So I had to flatten it out. But that's back now, that little bit. We just touched it and it fell off. It was so dried up and all the glue was gone. And one more original piece back. I think. Where are they? Oh, this block might be loose. It looks suspiciously not very attached very well. So we'll check that out next. Here's a little side block. It was not loose. 
just the top was open a tiny bit so, so I put some glue in there and squeezed it gently this wood is so hard there's no fear of denting it with these clamps they're not pressing very hard uh, here's these antique bolts this one's a little bent I think it will go right back though so once this dries I can put the bolts back and that will be finished here's the last piece and there's the board all glued together it has not been sanded yet you can still see all of the spacers that we added you know setting this up to be glued back and I noticed it has two little pinholes right there on either side of where the rib went and there's two more there's two on each rib those are from the factory they must have put pins on each side of the rib to hold the rib when they glued it because when these are full of liquid hide glue they're slippery and they kind of slip around so that's something cool that no one ever sees here's my little corner piece glued on the whole soundboard was sanded with a belt sander it's still rough I saw that the bridge also had those pins a little pinhole there so these guys used pins to locate their ribs and bridge to the board it's just another little thing that nobody ever sees or really knows of how these pianos were built put together a hundred years ago so it looks like the mason guys used pins here is rib number eight this is the longest rib this has been sanded and it is just about ready to be glued on This spacer is a little darker than I would have liked it to be, but it's too late to change it now. We might be able to lighten it up later. Those are nice, those spacers. They blend in very good. Over here too, those are good. So next time you see this, this will probably be attached. Where does it go? It's this one. It's one of these. Just like that. Okay, I have been drilling plugs. Here's a plug. Little soundboard piece. I think this is a, or was a, Chronic and Bach board. Very thick board. Got a bunch of plugs in here. And what I'm going to do with these is plug these holes. Just like that. Stick some glue in there and push these in and shave them flat. Make sure the grain goes the right way so they don't expand different ways and do funny things. So that is what's going on right now. 39 holes to fill with all of these. Check out that old can. Fruitcake. I don't make them like that anymore. So we plug these and then we put the board back in the case and then we re-drill the holes. We put dowels in here. Uh, 26 dowels. Pain in the neck. A whole bunch of dowels plate sits on all of them evenly. It's a lot of work to get that to be nice and even. Usually higher up over here and then they often taper out to zero right up to the rim over there. We will see. We measured the original height of the dowels so we will put them back. That's what they look like when they're finished. This is the bottom of the board. 
the middle hole was smaller for the bolt that had to be drilled out. Half inch, that is the size of the dowels they used. Luckily it's a normal size. Put this little piece back too. Put these in there, sand those flat later. But I think the next step is to glue on this rib. This is nice and sanded. All the scratch marks are gone. So that's coming up next. Here we have two ribs glued onto the board. That second one is drying. You can see we have our big clamp there squishing down on the rib in our dish shape. You can see it does have some crown. It's very dry right now. When moisture gets into the wood it will get a little more crown. That's what we want. Right now I am sanding the next rib spot to be glued. This rib. It's easy to get at when they're off. There's no ribs in the way. Making sure the board looks good, no scratches. And we're just going to keep working our way to the end. Gluing all 17 ribs back on. Lots of sanding going on. You can see all the sanding dust there. This next rib is ready to be glued on. Just about. The board is nice and smooth. Looks good. No scratches. We have two clamps going to speed up the process. Five ribs are now attached. That rib is waiting to be pressed. So there's a few left in the base and a few left in the treble to press on. So this will all be covered up with blankets, heated up nice and hot, and then we will glue them on. Moving right along on the soundboard, there is four ribs left to press on. One in the base, three in the treble. This piece we straightened out. This was that kind of jagged glue joint that was a little crooked that was glued earlier. So that's good now. And over here, we have our first shim that we added. We put it on before the rib went on. It is this little piece, that whitish wood ends right there. And what's cool is we're using the wood that came out of the original soundboard. This is one of the pieces that we couldn't put back. So we're using these to make shims out of. So this shim is the original soundboard wood, this piece. So that's pretty cool. Once all the ribs are on, we will flip it over and shim the other side too. So it's like a double shim, shimmed on both sides. Very strong. That's it, all the ribs will be on very soon. Here are the last two ribs drying on the board. They were glued a little while ago. The treble one is so short, we didn't need our big clamp there. We just used our old C-clamps with some rubber to protect the rib so it doesn't get all dented in. Those are drying. And we now have a very pretty board. Right now is a perfect time to glue on these brakes we have from when we took the soundboard out of the case. That will go there in this one. Only two. Those glue back very easy. No trouble. So here is the 100 year old soundboard. You can see one of the spacers. I would have liked for it to have been a little lighter, but it's no problem if it's a little darker. These ones blend in good. 
Lots of sanding going on. Evening up the color. Sanding out some gray spots here and there. This wood is very hard. It's stubborn wood. You have to sand it a lot to do a little. But it's nice and even now. It's got that yellowish orange glow to it. I'm going to vacuum up all the sanding dust and prepare to put on the finish. One of my previous videos doing this, we were emphasizing on the fact that we just can't leave drifts behind because it's, they give you troubles later on. And very, very thin wash coat of shellac. We're going to do it again and add some to the solution to make it a little thicker, a little more body. But this soaks right in all the cracks and corners, especially in the corners. And it doesn't affect our glue joint, it's so thin. from past experiences. Never had any problems. Nice wood. This wood was hard. It was very, very, very hard to sand. Seems to resist everything. Suppose that's good. Okay, we'll come back on this. In a little while. Mm -hmm. And these ribs here, oh, they were they were perfectly straight before we glued them down here. And they are very, very round now. Boy, there's a lot of pressure in there. Look at how thick that soundboard is. This is like five millimeters at least. So, there we have it. Oh, it sucked it right up. But what this does is we're going to go over it again there. Yeah, I guess we could right away because it's dried down this end already. And what it does is it uh, protects it from getting dirty when we handle it from here on out. And we're going to, of course, put some more on here later. And if we see anything wrong now, like these dark spots over here, we should probably take care of it like right now. So. There we have it. Mason uh, double C. Okay, we have a thicker mixture now. And this should be just spread on as lightly as can be. But same way, pour it into the corners like this and there we have it. Just need not press hard when we're doing this. Just all you gotta do is spread it around evenly. That's important. So this is the last time we do this. And the next time, we're going to tape off the glue joint here so we don't get any there buildup, especially with linseed oil. That would be bad.
beautiful wood. I don't know, I don't see any mistakes. They knew what they were doing. And we're just going to wait for this to dry and see how it fits in the case.